What is the major cause of the increases in global average temperature, known as global warming? According to the IPCC, it is the increase in radiative forcing caused by the man-made increase in greenhouse gases. And what is the major contributor to radiative forcing? The IPCC states that the increase in carbon dioxide levels has been the predominant factor in the rising trend of global average temperatures and radiative forcing since 1750. This video will show solid evidence that this claim is unlikely to be accurate. What is more, we use the term unlikely in a well-defined manner adopted by the IPCC itself. This is the specific statement that we wish to challenge. We will put this statement under the microscope. In doing so, we will use peer-reviewed data from impeccable sources. For global average temperatures from 1750 to 1879, we use the data from Leclerc and Erlemans. As this diagram shows, this study featured in the IPCC 2013 report and can also be found on the NOAA website. For global average temperatures since 1880, we use the NOAA data. For carbon dioxide levels from 1750 to 2004, we use data from the Law Dome Ice Core and we use the Mona Loa data for 2005 to 2016. Having established a firm basis, we can now examine the IPCC claim that increases in carbon dioxide levels cause increases in global average temperature levels. First, we clarify what is meant by the term cause. Many books have been written on cause and effect. We will turn to this concise definition by Lord Bertrand Russell. He says that we should be able to infer the effect from the cause, whatever may be happening elsewhere. In other words, if carbon dioxide causes increases in global average temperature, then we should be able to infer those increases, whatever may be happening elsewhere. So when we go on to examine the source of data, will we be able to infer the trends of global average temperature from the trends of carbon dioxide levels? Whatever may be happening elsewhere? Let's see. We can now look at the facts. There are two key dates. 1750 marks the start of the Industrial Revolution when mankind mined and burned fossil fuels, releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 1880 marks the time when climate data started to be systematically recorded worldwide, using equipment such as the Stevenson screens depicted. And importantly, as can be seen from this map, the coverage of recording equipment has gradually increased since 1880. We will start our analysis at this juncture, 1880, up until the end of 2016. We will look at the two major sub-periods to determine whether we can infer the trends of global average temperature from the trends of carbon dioxide levels. The first sub-period is 1880 to 1936. Throughout this time, the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere rose steadily with a trend of 3.386 parts per million per decade. However, the trend in global average temperature over this period of 37 years was zero. 
We now move to another sub-period, 1940 to 1980. The trend of carbon dioxide levels has almost doubled to 6.24 parts per million per decade. But again, the trend in global average temperature was equal to zero. So the facts tell us that from 1880 to 2016, there were two extended periods where the trend in global average temperature was equal to zero, despite the fact that carbon dioxide levels were consistently increasing. Let's summarize. We have the fact that the number of years from 1880 to 2016 inclusive, where the trend of carbon dioxide was greater than zero, equals 137. And the number of years where the trend of global average temperature was less than or equal to zero, equals 98. Which means that the carbon dioxide trends correlated with global average temperature for only 28% of the 137 years since 1880. Based on the fact that there is less than a 30% correlation, it is difficult to suggest that we can infer the trends of global average temperature from the trends of carbon dioxide levels. But examining only the period 1880 to 2016 is open to the accusation of cherry picking. So to examine the entire period, 1750 up until 2016, we need to examine the missing subperiod from 1750 to 1879. For that entire period of 130 years inclusive, carbon dioxide levels rose with a trend of 1.01 .01 part per million per decade. What was the effect on global average temperature? It was negative. Global average temperature fell at a trend of minus 0 0.01 degrees Celsius per decade. Summarising for the entire period 1750 to 2016, the number of years from 1750 to 2016 inclusive, where the trend of carbon dioxide level was greater than zero, equals 267, and the number of years where the trend of global average temperature was less than or equal to zero, equals 228. The correlation is thus less than 20%. Why are these percentages relevant? The IPCC judges the likelihood of an outcome in terms of percentages, with, for example, it being virtually certain if there is a 99 to 100% probability. It views a probability of between 10 and 33% as being unlikely. And this is the range of correlation between carbon dioxide and global average temperature that the facts have revealed. With this in mind, we can come to a conclusion. Can we infer the trends of global average temperature from the trends of carbon dioxide levels, whatever may be happening elsewhere? To answer this question, we must now consider three facts. Carbon dioxide levels have risen consistently since 1750 until 2016. From 1880 to 2016, the correlation is less than 30% between carbon dioxide trends and global average temperature trends. From 1750, to 2016, the correlation is less than 20% between carbon dioxide trends and global average temperature trends. It therefore seems that we cannot confidently infer rates of change in global average temperature 
from rates of change in carbon dioxide levels. Going further, it seems we must say there is an unlikely causal relationship between the rise in the trend of carbon dioxide levels and the trend of global average temperature. There are possible explanations for this lack of correlation. El Nino, La Nina, CFCs, HFCs, volcanoes, oceans, ice sheets, aerosols, etc. But these explanations do not take into account the definition of causality. From Russell's definition, we asked the question, can we infer the trends of global average temperature from the trends of carbon dioxide levels? Whatever may be happening elsewhere. So we should be able to infer temperature trends despite these possible explanations. But from the data provided, we cannot. We may be tempted, therefore, to simply say that the IPCC statement is wrong. But perhaps a more balanced view would lead us to suggest that there must be, at the very least, a certain amount of doubt and uncertainty with regard to this statement. An objective assessment would seem to be that the IPC statement is unlikely. We conclude this video by asking the audience to review the data provided and to ask themselves if the IPCC assertion regarding the causal effect of carbon dioxide can be held with any great confidence. We leave the final word with Lord Bertrand Russell.